Welcome to this McMastery lesson on rhythm analyses. What is rhythm analyses? Well, let me explain. In the previous sections, we've looked at the single cardiac cycle from different viewpoints. By different viewpoints, I mean we looked at it from different leads. For example, we looked at them from the standard leads, the augmented lead, and from each of the precordial leads. Conversely, when we now turn to rhythm analyses, we have to look at the relationship of subsequent beats to one another. And by doing so, we always have to ask ourselves these three questions. Is it normal? Is it disturbed? Or is it replaced by something? When we talk about rhythm and arrhythmia in electrocardiography, we usually refer to the relationship of QRS complexes with one another. Because, after all, QRS complexes are what is hemodynamically relevant. But we should also always look for atrial activity and consider the relationship between P's and QRS complexes as well. In order to be able to diagnose rhythm abnormalities, we must first define what is a normal rhythm and which kinds of abnormalities can be expected. We already know that our normal rhythm is sinus rhythm which is triggered by impulses coming from the sinoauricular node or sinus node, then traveling down through the AV node and down to the ventricles. So let's have a look at a ladder diagram. We already know the ladder diagram from the yellow belt section. This is a schematic representation of the electrical activity that's happening inside the heart. So from here to here is what's happening in the sinus node. From here to here is what's happening in the atria. Here is the AV node and the ventricles. And down here, we see what's happening on the ECG. So once the sinus node depolarizes, this electrical activity travels through the atria in order to cause atrial depolarization depicted by the blue box or by the P wave on the ECG then the impulse travels through the AV node down to the ventricles and causes ventricular depolarization depicted by the red box here and by the QRS complex on the ECG. And then the cycle starts all over again. The sinus node discharges, depicted up here. Then the impulse travels down through the atria, causing atrial depolarization depicted by a blue box or the P wave down here. Then it travels through the AV node down to the ventricles, where it causes ventricular depolarization depicted by the red box again and the QRS complex down in the ECG. And then the cardiac cycle ends with the T wave, after which the whole cycle starts all over again. We've already learned in the yellow belt section that a normal sinus rhythm is present if the following four criteria are met. Number one, the P waves are positive in leads one and two depicted by the blue arrow here. Number two, every P wave is followed by a QRS complex. Let's look at our first beat. We have a P followed by a QRS, then again a P followed by a QRS. P, QRS. Number three, the distance between each P wave and the following QRS complex is constant, which is true here. So this distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here and from here to here. And number four, the distance between the QRS complexes is constant. So the distance from here to here is the same as from here to here. Our conclusion is that this has to be sinus rhythm. What kind of abnormalities can be expected from the cardiac rhythm? Well, there are two types of situations. First, when the rhythm is regular, and second, when the rhythm is irregular. Let's check out situations when the abnormal rhythm is regular. To help you understand the concepts that follow, I will only show you spikes, which should represent QRS complexes, and I will leave out P waves and T waves entirely for now. This is an example of a cardiac rhythm that's regular and normal. Here, the heart beats at a rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute. When the heart rhythm is abnormal but regular, it beats too fast or too slow. Let's check out an example when it beats too fast. This is an example of tachycardia. The heart beats at a rate above 100 beats per minute. Down here, we have a heart rate that's too slow. 
the heart beats at a rate below 60 beats per minute. We call that bradycardia. Now let's check out a couple of situations when the abnormal rhythm is irregular. So this is an example of a normal and regular rhythm. Let's see a couple of examples of irregular rhythms. So let me explain what's happening here. Here we have one additional beat following each normal beat. So this is the normal beat. This is the additional beat. This is the normal beat. This is the additional beat. Down here, we have two additional beats following each normal beat. So this is the normal beat, two additional beats. Normal beat, two additional beats. Normal, two additional beats. Down here, we have additional beats following normal beats every now and then. So since there's some regularity in these examples, we call these abnormal rhythms regular irregularity. Let's check out what this regular irregularity is. So if you have one additional beat following each normal beat, then we call that bigeminous. When you have two additional beats following a normal beat, then we call that trigeminous. And if you have additional beats following normal beats every now and then, we call those single ectopic beats. Now let's check out another type of irregularity. Since there's no regularity to this ECG at all, we call it an irregular irregularity. And we're going to cover this type of rhythm abnormality in depth later on. I can tell you that much. This is usually atrial fibrillation. After making this rough distinction between regular rhythm abnormalities and irregular rhythm abnormalities, it's quite a mouthful, we'll now learn in detail how we can become experts in reaching specific rhythm diagnoses in our patients. But before we go into arrhythmias in a systematic way, we'll learn how to diagnose a couple of abnormal rhythms that have such a typical appearance that they can be recognized at a glance. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.